Hey guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video we are going to be performing an experiment that is in the second semester of our physics, applied physics lab. So the aim of the experiment is to study the charging and discharging of a capacitor and finding out the time constant by using a voltmeter. So for this experiment you are going to need certain apparatus. So I'm going to tell you each and everything that you are going to be needing for this experiment. And I've modified the apparatus a bit because I'm performing this experiment at home and I just don't have each and every resource available. So first of all what you're going to need is a power supply. So I have a variable lab bench power supply over here that I can just adjust the voltage and current according to my need. So over here, I can just set this uh, lab bench power supply to the desired voltage value. You are also going to need a really precise multimeter. So over here, I'm using the DM98 multimeter. Uh, this is from HTC Instruments. And this is a really precise multimeter. And it's, of course, also like, it's just a really nice multimeter to have. Also, you're going to be needing some capacitor. So I'm over here. These are the 2002, uh, 2200 microfarad capacitors. And you're also going to be needing some resistors. So these are metal film resistors. These are 320 kilo ohm resistors. However, it's just written 330, but I've just measured the value of these resistors. So these are metal film resistors. So these have a tolerance of 1%. And these are 220 microfarad capacitors. And we are just going to see which capacitor we can measure, etc. But yeah, of course, it's just better to have a range of capacitors. And this is a 100 kilo ohm uh, resistor so of course we are just going to measure the precise value of this resistor using this multimeter and we can also use my homemade multimeter so this is also like really precise in measuring the capacitance and resistance so apart from that you are also going to need some alligator wires so these are alligator so these are wires that have alligator clips at the end so you can just like easily connect and disconnect the circuits so over here you can see we can just like connect and disconnect each and every component you're also going to need a breadboard and you will also need a two-way switch so this is a two-way switch so for for example if you're on the center contact and if you flick the switch then these two contacts then these two contacts will be like uh will be made and this will be like shorted together and if you just flick the switch in the other direction so these two contacts will be like in contact so these will be like internally shorted so this is a two-way switch that you're going to need. You're also going to need a breadboard. So of course, it's just like hell easy to wire each and everything on a breadboard. And you're also going to need some uh, multimeter probes that have alligator clips on it for the easy connection. So I've just like made them myself only. Because these type of probes, yeah, of course, we can use these type of probes. But it's just like, it's just a pain to like hold it on the capacitor, etc. So it's just better to have alligator clips. And we, here's some more wires. So guys, over here I have just taken out a capacitor and this is a 2200 microfarad capacitor. Over here also you can see on it it will be written somewhere. Over here you can see it's written 2200 microfarad capacitor and this is a 220 microfarad capacitor. Mm, well, okay, over here it's written 220 microfarad capacitor and this one, this one is a carbon resistor and its value is around 100k. And this one is a metal film resistor and its value, the mentioned value is around 330 kilo ohm. But of course, we'll just measure all these components. So let's get started. Let's just measure all these components precisely using a multimeter. I'm also going to change the probes for my multimeter because we want the alligator clips probe. Because of course, we just don't want to hold the components. That will just create a contact resistance. And these probes will just create a constant pressure on the component lead. So we'll get a more accurate value out of this. So over here, we have just changed these probes. And now let's get measuring. Now let's just fire up the multimeter and put it on the capacitance test mode. Over here, it's, you can see it's just showing me where to plug in the probe. So I'll just plug in the probes over there. So the black probe goes over here and the red probe goes over here. And now it is an auto ranging multimeter. So I just don't need to like care about the range of the multimeter. So black to the negative side of the electrolytic capacitor and red to the positive side. Let's just give it some time. Oh, it's going to turn on. Over here, you can see. Now it has just like completely measured the value of the capacitor. And it's coming out to be around, let me just hold it. So it's coming out to be 2.155 millifarad. So we're just going to note down this value and just let's move on to the next capacitor. 
Now where there is a 220 microfarad capacitor, negative to the negative, positive to the positive. And here we go. Over here you can see the multimeter has just measured the value. Let me just hold this value. Okay, so the value, the actual value of this capacitor is 229.3 microfarads. So we're just going to note down this value as well. Now let's just move on to the resistance. Over here you can see the multimeter is telling me where to plug in the probes. So I'm just going to plug in the probes over there. Now, first of all, let's just measure the metal film resistor. So, here we go. Again, the function, this multimeter is auto-ranging, so I just don't need to worry about the range. And over here, you can see, it has measured the value to be 319.9. And it's about like 300, so it's exactly this much. So it's 320 kilo ohm. So we're just going to note down this value. And now, let's just move on to the next one. Now, this is... This is a claimed 100 kilo ohm resistor. Well, let's just see what value we get. So you can see the value of this resistor is around 100.6 kilo ohm. So we are just going to note down this value as well. Now before we assemble the circuit, I've also just set my lab bench power supply to exactly 5 volts. Well, it's 5.002 volts but yeah you can just consider it to be 5 volts because I just can't go in a deeper precision than that because this is the maximum precision that I can obtain and you can see over here we are just getting 5 volts at the display of this power supply as well but I've just like con confirmed it with my multimeter and of course it can just like my power supply can deliver a maximum short circuit current of 7 amperes as well over here we have got all the values you can also take a screenshot of all these values so Let's just get on and assemble our circuit. You'll be able to see the circuit diagram of this particular experiment on your screen right now. So let's just assemble the circuit according to that circuit diagram. First of all, we're going to take our capacitor and just place it on the breadboard, keeping the negative terminal on the left hand side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our 100 kilo ohm resistor and place it in series with the capacitor. Now, this point over here will be connected to a wire. This is the positive side of the capacitor. And we are going to connect this to the middle terminal of the switch. Just like this. Now we are going to take our power supply and we are going to connect the negative right over here to the resistor and we are going to connect the positive one to the switch right over here and make sure that your power supply is off during this operation otherwise the capacitor will start charging now we are going to take the black wire and we are going to connect the right hand side of the right hand terminal of this switch to one side of the black wire and the other side will go to this resistor right here so we're gonna make this connection just like this the circuit might look a bit messy over here but yeah it will just like it will work really well now we are going to connect, uh, now we are going to connect our multimeter to the circuit. So over here, this is our multimeter. I just first of all turn it on as well. So the negative probe will go to the negative of the capacitor, and the positive probe will go to the positive of the capacitor. This is how we are going to monitor the voltage across the capacitor while it's charging and discharging. And make sure that your contacts are really good and you just press in your components into the breadboard so that they make a perfect contact. And now if you just flick the switch, the capacitor will start charging.
and if you just flick the switch in the other direction the capacitor will start discharging over here also I've just turned on my power supply and you can see over here right now it's at the discharging state and if I just flick the switch the capacitor will start charging and the voltage will start to increase and it will just increase a bit slowly because of course we're just like using a really large resistor in uh, series with the capacitor so of course we can just change the capacitor value and the resistor value if you just want to make the process a bit faster but this will give us a more accurate graph so guys my strategy for taking a reading is first of all i'm just gonna take the readings at a step of 0 0.1 volt so i'm just gonna like stop like i'm just gonna lap the uh, stopwatch so i'm just gonna use an old phone for the stopwatch purpose so i'm just gonna like lap the timer for example like if i've started so i'll just lap it like this whenever uh, I just reach like whenever I for, for example at 0 0.1 volt I'll just like make one lap and then at 0 0.2 volts I'll make another lap and I'm just gonna enter them on my excel sheet that I've just made you can also see the screenshot of the excel sheet on your screen right now so let's just get started with the experiment and of course we're just gonna like discharge the capacitor like for example like it will just like take a lot of time to discharge the capacitor so I'm just gonna use a jumper wire to discharge the capacitor fully in one go over here you can see now the capacitor voltage is zero volts so of course it will just like rise a bit because of like charging due to some factors external factors well I also have no idea about this so anyway so let's just start our readings and we just want to flick the switch to start charging the capacitor and we just also gonna start the timer as soon as we flick the switch
so guys this is gonna be my last reading because of course you can sh just not make a graph that is so long because there's a limited time base that you can take on your graph so of course we can't just make the graph up to 5 volts so and it will be just like the process will be really slow after this so this is my last reading that I'm gonna be taking okay so now we are done that's it what we like of course we can just calculate the time constant using these many readings only because yeah of course we just needed to take it up to 4 volts only so I just took a bit extra so so as to like show you what the graph of the charging of the capacitors just looks like so that's it guys so let's just perform the experiment for the discharging of the capacitor as you can see that I've just charged the capacitor to about 5 volts and right now the switches are charging mode so what we are gonna be doing is first of all we are just gonna remove this jumper because I just like short circuited the resistor so that I can just get the capacitor to exactly 5 volts and now what we are gonna do is we are just gonna start the timer okay so 3 2 1 go
so this is gonna be the last reading because of course I'm not just gonna go up to zero volts because it won't just go to zero volts because the resistance value that we have took is just too large and it will just take a hell lot of time about one hour about to go to zero volts so I'm just not just gonna do that so this is gonna be my last reading and you can of course obtain the value of the time constant with these many readings that's all these are the, all the readings that we can like we have taken so I'm just gonna stop the stopwatch and I'm also gonna like disconnect the circuit so that's all guys now let's just move on to the computer and see what the graph looks like so after performing the experiment we have obtained these values from the multimeter and the stopwatch okay so over here you can see this is the time over here you can see there's the time value so that we obtained from our stopwatch uh, or from the mobile application that we were using okay over here this for this is for the discharging and this is for the charging of the capacitors and after plotting the values etc so i'm just going to show you the graphs in a bit but these are the values from which you can obtain the time constant because the time constant value so the time constant um, will occur at around uh, 3.16 volts so the time it takes for the capacitors to charge to the voltage of 3.16 volts is going to be the time constant in case of charging and in case of discharging um, wait for a second it let me just calculate it okay so we can just use this graph right here for the discharging one so it should be a uh, 0.37 volts of the original value so which means that it will be 5 into 0.37 so 5 into 0 0.37 it will give you 1.85 volts so at 1.85 volts the time constant we can just like find out the time constant so now i'm going to show you first of all the graph for the charging of the capacitor so this one is for the charging of the capacitor over here you can see we are getting this beautiful curve so this is an exponential curve so it will start from the origin and it will go up till 5 volts and over there like <clears throat> as the graph like proceeds up to 5 volts so it will just like become an asymptote to 5 volts so as it will the charging process will be really slow after that so the graph is going to extend like way further so that's why i just stopped taking the readings over here because otherwise i would have to make the graph of really like of really large values so on our y-axis we would have some really large values from that will be extending up to around one hour or so so we, i just didn't want it i just didn't want that and for our x-axis i have just multiplied all the values with 100 so for example this one is like right around here you can see first of all let me just show you so for example uh, instead of taking 0 0.1 volts so i've just taken it as 10 on the y-axis i'm sorry on the y-axis i've just changed the values okay not on the x-axis on the y-axis i've changed the values so instead of taking 0 0.1 i'm just taking uh taking it to be 10 so multiplied it by a factor of 100 to obtain a graph that is a bit more decent to look at because i just can't change the scale on this online graph plotter and now let's just come to the discharging of the capacitor over here you can see we are just getting this beautiful graph which will be an asymptote to our x-axis so over here also uh, on the y-axis i've just multiplied all the values by a factor of 100 so for example this is it is representing 5 volts so 5 volts is represented by 500 so you can just like guess it so because because i didn't have the option of changing the scales over here on this graph so i had to do this and you can see that the discharging of the capacitor will just take a lot of time if you continue to plot our like if you just continue to take our ratings so it would have just gone like all the way and it would have been a type of an asymptote so after some time the capacitor would have been discharged but it would have taken a long time so that's all guys so over from both the graphs you can obviously obtain the time constant for example from this graph if you take the value like for example like the um, time constant can be calculated at the value of 3.16 volts so let's just do it and over here you can see 3.16 so it will be right around here between these two so between these two will be the so it will be right around here so this line will be the asymptote like will be the time constant so this will be corresponding to the time constant and let's just look at it up 
and this one is this one is right about at 230 seconds so the time constant from our charging graph is around 230 seconds of course if you'll just plot it on the paper it will be a bit better but according to the graph that I've plotted online so it is around 230 seconds so similar goes for this one so as we calculated the voltage value should be around 1.85 volts so we can just calculate the time constant from this graph as well so 1.85 volts will be around it will be around here so let's just okay so it will occur around here and uh, let's just move down so it will be around at 200 220 so 220 second is the time constant from the discharge graph so you can see that the time constant is pretty much close to the original value so if you just calculate the time constant from the calculation like for example the capacitor value is uh, around 100 and one, 2155 microfarad and the resistor value is 100 and uh, 100.6 kilo ohm so if we calculate the time constant according to this so it will come out to be let me just calculate it first so to 155 into 100.6 okay and this will be this will be divided by 1000 so it is coming out to be 216 and if you remember that from one graph we were obtaining the time constant as 220 seconds so it's really close and the error is almost negligible so this is a really good readings that we have got over here so of course you can just use this reading in your graph as well and you can just like obtain a much better graph than what i have obtained over here because you will have a bit more precision than this so that's all guys thank you for watching my video and if you like the video please hit the like button and don't forget to share my like share this video to other students who you who you know that will be having this practical and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you in the next video